Hey gearheads and welcome to Garage Talk. I'm Corey and that is the first new Dodge model in over a decade. That is the new Dodge Hornet. And in this video, I'm gonna take you on a quick tour of this GT model, maybe take it out on the road for a little spin. Stay tuned. All right, gearheads, I am at the 2023 Texas Auto Riders Texas Auto Roundup where I'm getting my first chance to check out this new Hornet. This is the GT version, not the more powerful RT version. And a lot of that comes down to what is under the hood here. So let's go ahead and pop the hood. In this GT model, we get a version of the Hurricane inline engine. So this one is a two liter turbocharged four cylinder dubbed the hurricane four and it makes 268 horsepower and 295 pound feet of torque making this the most powerful gas engine in the segment which is the compact crossover utility vehicle segment whatever you want to call it with the likes of rav4 um, CRV and, and uh, those different vehicles. You can also get this one in the RT version, which is the first electrified Dodge product. And that one has a uh, 1.3 liter engine. It makes 288 horsepower and 383 pound feet of torque and can drive 30 miles on all electric range because again, it is electrified and you can shave a full one and a half seconds off the normal zero to 60 time in that one of 5.6 seconds. So add a second and a half and that's what you get here on this GT. The Hornet RT that they have out here is 51,925, whereas this GT is a well-equipped but very entry level and it is a 31,990. So just above that 30,000 price mark which makes this one a very fun vehicle that is also very attainable by many uh, consumers. Closing the hood, we can see this is very much a Dodge vehicle. It ha very much has that Dodge presence, that Dodge look, and you can see we get LED lights, LED running lights, turn signals, all the good stuff up there. Do have a spot for radar adaptive cruise control, and even though this is a compact crossover which Dodge has not introduced as of yet until this it still very much exudes that Dodge character now we do know that this is on a shared platform with the Alfa Romeo Tonali so this is an Italian car done Dodge's way this is a compact crossover done Dodge's way so all of those power numbers the acceleration the fact that it's the fastest and quickest accelerating compact crossover yeah, that's Dodge's DNA. And uh, I really like some of the cues, aspects, and Easter eggs on this vehicle. You know, Jeep does Easter eggs very well, so sister company Dodge could not be left out. Down here, uh, we will get to some of those Easter eggs in a little bit, but down here we've got black wheels wrapped in Goodyear Eagle Sport Rubber. These are all season tires. They are 255, uh, 225, 55 R18 inch wheels and tires. So yeah, those numbers correspond to the tires, not the wheels. 18 inch wheels, there you go. Um, been in a lot of vehicles today, but you can see from this angle, it very much looks like the Alfa Romeo Tonali down to the little kick out on that back window. Uh, and everything about it, it just screams Alfa Romeo Tonali, which makes this a very attractive little crossover as well, since it does share its roots with a very prestigious brand like Alfa Romeo. Moving around back to the back, you can see full width LED lights back here, uh, a light up Dodge logo here in the center. I really like that. LED turn signals, brake lights, and the like back here as well. We do get a, a GT badge here on the back. Everything is blacked out on this one. Black is unfortunately hard to film and show off a lot of the things on it, so I'm going to do my best not to be in a reflection of all the shots. Moving back here, we've got decent size a luggage compartment. I did uh, check out one of these at the Houston Auto Show, and I was able to get my luggage in here, though it took some creative packaging. 
We have a hard parcel shelf back here on the back. I don't know if you notice, this is not a power lift gate. So for 31, 32,000 on this GT model, you're gonna be opening and closing that lift gate yourself. But we do get radar parking sensors front and rear in this one. And uh, yeah, all around a very nice package. But let's take a look at what this one is like on the inside. See how much of those Alfa Romeo roots uh, trickle down to what's on the inside of this one. Before we get in this one, I did want to show you the key. Typical Dodge key, Stellantis key. It almost exactly mimics my wife's uh, 2014 Jeep key. So not a lot going on here. Lock, unlock, and your hatch release and a panic button. No remote start on this particular model, but it is a proximity key, so you can keep it in your pocket. Dodge gives you a little button right here to lock it, and uh, to unlock it, you just pull on the handle and give it a second and it will unlock for you. Over here, before we get inside, I'll show you the door panel. So you get express uh, windows all the way around. Lock and unlock is up here and your mirror controls. It does look like you can power fold them from right there as well. So uh, that's a nice little touch. Moving to the inside again, this one is nicely equipped, but does come with cloth seats. We've, uh, again, this is on the more affordable side of the Hornet line at just under 32,000. Let's get inside away from all that construction work, see what it's like when we fire it up. So again, it does have a push button start. We'll see the whole thing fire up right here. And we get dual screen. So we've got a full digital gauge cluster up here and a digital uh, infotainment screen right here. Very easy to use, uh, very easy to see. I really like how this gauge cluster has kind of uh, a dual element to it in that it looks like you've got actual tack and speedometer in there, it got that round aspect to it, and then a condensed section there in the middle. But if you've been in a modern Dodge product, you you're quite familiar with how they're doing all their digital infotainment and gauge clusters here. Very customizable with uh, different options uh, here on the steering wheel. You can also control your radio and things like that. So uh, very, very nice system here. This is a tilt and telescoping, manual tilt and telescoping wheel, which is nice at the 30,000 price point. But let's start over here and work our way across. You've got your light controls as well as your brightness controls here on the left side. And that's really it over here. You get a little bit of the faux stitching and faux leather up here, which carries all the way across to the passenger side. So again, just letting you know you're in a sporty Dodge product, the quickest and fastest uh, compact crossover in the business. Just need a little bit of red accenting, right? Very good Uconnect system here. If you've been in a modern Stellantis product, you know you connect well in and out. I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail because I don't have too much time with this one. There's a lot to dig into there with the infotainment system. Climate controls are re really easy to uh, learn and operate. You do have a dual zone automatic climate control up front here. Moving down, you have a USB-A, USB-C, and a 12 volt cigarette style outlet right there. Your result, that is where your engine start stop button is, and that is where you can defeat the start stop in traffic. No Qi wireless charging pad, but a nice uh, spot to store your phone right there, more upright where it's looking at you. You do get a volume roller right here, so you can control the volume here or here, which I really like the roller. Electronic parking brake, a little additional controls here. Uh, that's where you get your control for the transmission. Very small center console here, so pretty deep but very small because you've got these forward and aft cup holders right there. Uh, we do have a sport mode on the steering wheel, which changes your gauges and gives you a more sporty look. Nothing real fancy here on the rear view mirror, but it is frameless. I like that a lot. No uh, sunroof or anything to speak of in this particular model, because again, it is on the low side of the pricing structure at just under 32,000. Still a very fun one, but that's me sitting up here. Let's see what it's like sitting behind myself at 510. All right, getting into the back seat of the Dodge Hornet GT. 
again, you can see that little cutout right here. It goes into the body side, taken directly from that Tonali Alfa Romeo. But fairly wide opening rear door, so you can get a child seat in very nicely. Very small window switch, interesting. And a decent amount of space back here. I do like the red stitching and the two-tone back here on the back seat, so it's not just bland and plain back here. These are 60-40 split bench. You can see the 60% is here on the driver's side, and you can fold it forward right here uh, from over the shoulder. But let's get in behind myself at 510. It is a compact crossover. I've got plenty of room back here. I'm not hitting and bumping. I'm, I'm very comfortable back here. I do get a map pocket here and here, and we get air vents and USB-A and USB-C back here. So you're definitely not a second class citizen back here. You get some amenities and a little a bit of power back here. We also have a fold down a center armrest with side-by-side -side cup holders. I guess a spot for your phone if you wanted to. And showing its Alfa Romeo roots, you do get a ski pass through here on the uh, center seat when you fold down the center armrest. So very nice there. I did not look into it, but yeah, the uh, lower latch points are exposed, but are noted by buttons down here. So you can get to them very easily, not covered or ob obstructed by any of the seats. So that's a nice touch. You only get them on the outboard seats here, nothing for the middle seat. And then coming up, taking a look at headroom back here. Plenty good at 510. I'm comfortable, there's plenty of room. Definitely no problem riding in this one for any length of time. It is a compact crossover, but it's still plenty roomy. And again, I've already checked out uh, getting all of my luggage back there in the back. That's enough sitting in it. Let's see how this one drives. All right, getting in the Hornet GT, putting it in gear. Let's set off and see how the quickest, fastest compact crossover handles out on the road. I will say this feels very much like the Alfa Romeo. The interior is very premium. That's not a Dodge a clicker there on the turn signal. So again, the family ties to Alfa Romeo are very evident in that, and that's not a bad thing. It, it feels very upscale. So at a vehicle, again, entry point right at 30,000. This feels like a very premium car, and that is a good thing. So some people say that the Alfa Romeo is the expensive Dodge Hornet. I would say this is the budget Alfa Romeo. There's a lot of positive things that can be said to the fact that there are some strong family ties between the two of them right there. But Dodge promises us a 0-60 to 60 time of 6.5 seconds in this one. We'll wait for this Chevy to pass us. We'll see exactly what this thing can do getting it out on the highway. Ready, set, let's go. All right. 60. So, yeah, plenty quick. This will be more than enough uh, to get you out in traffic, to help you get around slow traffic, merge onto highways. This is a, a really good package. You can tell out here on this textured pavement, I'm just under 70 miles an hour. A little bit of road noise, but that's to be expected. Again, this is not a fair surface to test these on. Here in North Texas, in all of Texas really, these farm to market roads can get rather noisy. So hopefully we can get our hands on one of these for a week's worth of testing very soon, where we can test it on all different kinds of road surfaces. But uh, compared to some other vehicles I've had out here, very typical. Nothing to write home about, whether too noisy or too loud. Not exactly sure how much of that the cameras are picking up, but yeah, it's a fun little car. It is a compact crossover done Dodge's way. The steering on it is quick and direct. Direct, it lets you know exactly what the car is going to do. So, all around, a very fun vehicle. Again, the brand ties between Alfa Romeo and Dodge in this vehicle are pretty strong. So, again, this is your value, Alfa Romeo. Unfortunately, I don't have much time with this, and this is really all I get to do with it before having to take it back and jump into something else. 
before I run out of time at this event in total. So if you want to see more from us, hopefully in this, be sure and hit subscribe, follow, ring the bell, like, comment, all those things to let the algorithms know to show you more content from us. We are going to be on Dodger's case to get one of these on our home turf for an extended test drive very soon. If you want to see more stuff that we have coming down the pike, uh, find us on all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube. Everything is at GT Garage Talk, and you can read more about this vehicle on our website at gtgaragetalk.com. But as for me, behind the wheel of the Dodge Hornet GT, till next time, gearheads. Bye. I remember when zero to 60 runs of six and a half seconds were like sports sedan territory and now we're getting it here in a relatively affordable compact utility vehicle it's just fun to see how the automotive industry has advanced and my 20 plus years of being an enthusiast myself <laughs>